make it into the episode. We guarantee you it's a good time. So Loretta, let's dig in. Thank you. Bon appetit. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Lovely. Okay. What a great way to end my second wonderful adventure in Exuma. It really is a beautiful island. I really surprised myself at how much I enjoyed bone fishing, even though I had to get up before the fish. It was quite a thrill to actually catch and release some of these wily fish. I'm glad I didn't miss seeing the littlest church in Exuma. It was quite a discovery. I can't imagine how they made it before there was a bridge from Little Exuma to the mainland. Of course, the Tropic of Cancer Beach needs to be added to my best beaches in the Bahamas list. It just goes on forever and it's so gorgeous. I really did not want to leave. The historic side of Exuma also surprised me. The Loyalist tombs in Royal Town and Hermitage reminded me about what a long history this island has to offer. It was nice to be able to remember those who came before. Of course, the Pompey statue is another great reminder of what our ancestors had to endure and what heroes they had to be to survive. And the old jailhouse also showed me what they had to go through. Would any of my fab ventures be complete without looking for my perfect home? And I certainly saw one in February Point. It was the family island paradise I dream about whenever I'm caught in the hustle and bustle of Nassau. And to return home and visit my friend Loretta and her personal chef Emily, who prepared yet another amazing meal, ended my Exuma adventure in the best possible way. Now I'm going to enjoy a dessert I can only get when I visit Loretta. And we'll discuss my plans for my next island escapade. Watching the ZNS Network, the People's Station. Coming up in the news, the nation's leader presenting the annual budget communication in Parliament today. The Grand Bahama Human Rights Association will leave that Marco's alert is set to come on stream soon. And local religious leaders preparing for an island-wide outreach. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping the news, the nation's Prime Minister and Minister of Finance presenting the 2021-2022 fiscal budget communication in the House of Parliament today. Prime Minister, the most honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, telling the nation that the seeds the government planted previously are now germinating and they're looking to hasten their progress through this year's budget. The new budget includes several concessions as it relates to value-added tax and the extension of critical concessions for Grand Bahama and Abaco as these islands are still thriving to rebuild. 
the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis presenting the 2021-2022 fiscal budget titled Accelerate Bahamas Recovery Plan. The nation's leader says the plan is a comprehensive one designed to accelerate the economic recovery and rebound of the Bahamas that is already underway. Objectives of the plan include strengthening the impact of much-needed COVID-19 related support, accelerating the re-engagement of displaced workers, stimulating domestic, economic and commercial activity, extracting greater value from the tourism sector and accelerating the adoption of innovation and e-government technologies and services. In addition to these objectives, the Prime Minister says that the budget also presents additional incentives and concessions to bring some relief to Bahamians. Some of these measures include the following. Elimination of VAT on baby and adult diapers as well as sanitary pads and tampons for women. Elimination of duty on disinfectants in support of efforts to maintain hygiene and sanitation. Elimination of duty by application for construction and repairs to churches and other buildings used for religious gathering. Elimination of duty on a range of sporting equipment and apparatus to encourage exercise and fitness. Elimination of duty on a number of IT-related hardware and cabling to support private sector digitization efforts. Prime Minister Minnis adds that there will also be reductions in duty on a number of building supplies from 20% to 25% respectively to encourage construction activity. Most notably, Mr. Speaker, this includes the reduction in duty on electrical wire to 20% and continues the reduction duties on construction related items that we began last year. To encourage the growth and development of this promising niche sector, microbreweries have been defined in the law and will benefit from a reduction in the excise tax rate from $5 per gallon to $2 per gallon. They will also be able to sell their products outside of their premises. Products from microbreweries are high value collector's items and will promote job creation and export revenue. The nation's leader also noting that the reconstruction efforts in Abaco and Grand Bahama are continuing steadily post Hurricane Dorian and that progress has been limited by labor shortages and even supply shortages as typical supply chain operations have been disrupted because of the pandemic. To this end, concessions have been extended for these northern islands. To continue to support the reconstruction efforts in Abaco and Grand Bahama, we are extending the current relief order known as the SERS SERZ order to the end of December 2021. Thank you. This order provides tax relief for full suite of construction related supplies and activities and it will go a long way in supporting the full restoration of the impacted communities. The Prime Minister also had more good news for both islands. I am also pleased to advise that for the communities of Abaco and Grand Bahama, we are for a period of two years eliminating the VAT on conveyance for properties under 250000 for behemoths to encourage persons to invest in buying properties and homes in these islands. Foreign buyers under the same threshold will get a discounted VAT rate. Again, Mr. Speaker, under the Auxiliary Bahamas Plan, we want to incentivize persons to move with urgency with the investment plan. Not only will this spur commercial activity, it will make these transactions more affordable by ordinary behemoths. Megan Shepard, SNS Network News. The budget debate will begin on June 2nd.
Officials from the Ministry of National Security to sign a contract for the public warning system, Marcos Alert, in the nation's capital on Thursday. Tonight, the Grand Bahama Human Rights Association is applauding the new safety alert system set to come on stream, saying it is long overdue. Romico Knowles reports. Following the murder of 11-year-old Marco Archer in 2011, a law was enacted allowing authorities to send notifications alerting the public to missing children. It was called Marco Alert. Officials from the Ministry of National Security are preparing to sign two separate contracts for the implementation of the public warning system and the Royal Bahamas Defense Force audiovisual integration system. Human rights activist Joe Darville says as it relates to the protection of children, the systems are long overdue. When it comes to... Uh, the Marco Law and now the alert, Marco Alert, these are things that have been in the making for a very long time, for the last, well, previous to when the legislation was passed and I think it was 2019, and now finally the alert. And we have been pressing the governments, both governments, the previous one, the present one, to make sure that these particular matters are instituted and put in force so that we could follow the dictates of the United Nations. Darville adds that for far too long, systems for child protection were neglected in the country. According to the latest Royal Bahamas Police Force statistics, there were 100 missing person reports filed in 2020, 89 of which required no further action from officers and 11 still under investigation. The activist believes that in order for the Marcos alert to be successful, additional measures should be taken. We need to have the sexual offenders list um, published in order for parents to know whether or not someone who was charged and probably went to jail for sexual molestation of children uh, and have been released, and that individual is now living in the community. And so all of these things have only make sense when you deal with them comprehensively and cohesively. And so that is why I am very happy that the government is moving expeditiously ahead with this whole matter of the law and now the alert. In light of the economical challenges that many are faced with, he says child protection systems are needed more now than ever, as sexual exploitation of children is becoming prevalent in the country. It's now already becoming kind of institutionalized in this very country. And that's another thing we have to be very careful of because these are very challenging times with COVID, with Dorian, with hurricanes, etc. There are many parents and children who have been uh, as a result of these trying times, they have been subjected to really, really stringent measures with respect to how they're going to eat, how are they going to clothe themselves, and so on. And so when you look at children comprehensively, all of these need to be taken into, into place. And as a former teacher, he notes that he's well aware of the circumstances that children are faced with in the home. And you can bet that in all of the situations where children have gone missing and even murdered, uh, sexually molested and murdered, that would have been the attraction, something that was being given to them that they would not have normally been able to obtain from the home. In addition, he says there are many rules and regulations that govern the proper raising of children, and he contends that those involved in child care should be aware of them all. That is a must. So many teachers know nothing at all about uh, how children should be protected, even in the school setting, okay. and how you should discipline them and how you should not discipline them. And all of these rules and regulations are carried out, spelled out very care carefully in, in, in all of the regulations that we have signed on to. Rumiko Knowles, ZNS Network News. Members of the Progressive Liberal Party gathering for the opening of the party's Central Grand Bahamas headquarters and community center in Lewis Yard this past holiday weekend. Party leader, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis says he is pleased to have unionist Kirkland Russell running as a candidate for the PLP in the Central Grand Bahama constituency. He says Russell is a man with a heart for the people. Just ask the people and they will tell you Ask the members of St. Vincent, the poor Catholic Church. Where has been the drummer boy for over 40 years? And where they recognized him as Father of the Year in 2017. Ask the members of the labor movement, for whom he has worked tirelessly since 2006, and currently serves as Vice President of the Bahamas Hotel Managerial Association, and Vice President of the Commerce of the Bahamas Trade Union Congress. 
Davis says the Central Grand Bahama candidate is a committed individual who cares about his people and his community. And hence, Kirk Russell is a good fit for Central Grand Bahama. The man who at the age of 15 joined the Progressive World Party because he believed in justice and equality for all Bahamians. With our country facing the biggest crisis of our lifetimes, with Grand Bahama facing the biggest disaster of our generation, we need people like Clinton Russell and the rest of the Grand Bahama PLP team to bring hope and help to our people. Central Grand Bahama, prepare for a new day. The officer in charge of the island of Abaco speaking out tonight about the frequency of traffic accidents and fatalities on that northern island. Tonight he is pleading with residents to drive with due care and attention in an effort to save lives. Shashina Roll Farkasin reports. The island of Abaco reeling from two traffic accidents that has claimed the lives of residents on that northern island. Officer in charge of the northern island, Kenwood Taylor, says speeding continues to be a factor, adding that officers have also beefed up patrols and checks as a deterrent to speed while ensuring that residents are adhering to the traffic laws. The police here in Abaco, we have increased the visibility while out on patrols. Um, we have um, we've had road checks. Um, we've given out pamphlets in an effort to sensitize the motor in public and to make them aware of the speed limits for the various intersections, highways, school zones, and to ensure that they are wearing their seat belts. They don't have any open bottles in their vehicle, and they are not distracted by any electronic devices. We feel that by doing this, we can decrease the amount of traffic accidents and fatality that we're having on our streets here in Abaco. For the year, the island has had eight traffic fatalities, six of which has occurred on the Essie Boodle Highway. I would like to use this opportunity to sensitize the motoring public to be very vigilant while driving on our streets, in particular our highways. The speed limit for Essie Boodle Highway and Great Abaco Highway is 45 miles an hour. Please drive within the required speed limit, ensuring that you, the driver, and all of your passengers are wearing their seat belts. And he's also sharing these tips for precautionary measures. Please refrain from driving at night with your lights on high beam. This can distract oncoming vehicles and cause a possible collision. Don't drink and drive. It's against the law. It's also against the law to have open alcoholic beverages in your vehicle. Shishina Rolf Farkasen, ZNS Network News. Also from Abaco wanted suspect, 21-year-old Nathan Saunders of Cooperstown, Abaco, is now in police custody. Saunders was wanted by police for questioning in regards to a spree of housebreaking and stealing cases. He turned himself into police in Abaco around 8.15 this morning. A bulletin for Saunders' arrest was issued by police early this morning. Stay with us. There's still more news to come right after this break. Network is the place for deals. Bahamas get ready for our national launch coming June 1st, 2021. For the first time ever, any store can advertise their sale items or discounted coupons on ZNS. And you get TV and radio commercials at never before seen prices. So if you got stuff and you want to put it on sale, we will tell the entire Bahamas about it. So merchants, log on to ZNS Shopping Network.com and click the merchant inquiry button and get Get started! Don't let COVID-19 stand in the way of your education. The Bahamas Institute of Business and Technology has convenient online courses, which you can complete anywhere 
now, anytime. Completing my degree was affordable and convenient with BIBT's leading edge online classes. And now I have a great job and advancing in my career. BIBT, respected, affordable, recognized, and approved. Delivering quality education across the entire Bahamas. Visit BIBTBahamas.com for more information. Did you know that you can get the benefits of timeshare without the burdens of owning one? Finally, you can stay at over 4,000 top timeshare resorts across the globe for as little as $2.99 per week. Seabreeze Vacation Villas and Country Club, located at number two Port of Call Drive right here in Freeport, is pleased to introduce benefits without burdens. Visit SeabreezeVacationVillas.com to register for a complimentary breakfast or lunch preview or call 602-5617 to find out more today. Take your time, take your time. You sure, right, yo? Money shot. You sure? All right. Money right. shot. Okay, okay. Miss, 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 miss. Sick. You know Louis are buying, right? Oh, well, you must be getting kids be late. Well, I bring no money like that. Plus, you know you greedy. Well, today is your lucky day. Oh. Check out the Zadnet Shopping Network. See what deals they have on food. Look here. Boy, my cap got some super deals. Check it out. You got a $25 coupon for $15 and a $20 coupon for $10. <laughs> Well, my cap it is. All right, hey, I will limit you, eh? Log on to ZNSShoppingNetwork.com and get your deals today. Becoming a BTC Postpaid customer is fast and easy. And what's more, by signing up, the deals are instant. Tell us about some of the deals available for postpaid customers. Well, we always have amazing deals available for our postpaid customers. We have up to 75% off any device that we carry, and you can also get up to $300 off of a phone if you're an existing customer. A new customer, you can get a free phone. And that's some of the amazing deals that we have at any of our major stores. Let's talk again about switching over from prepaid to postpaid. Okay, when you switch over from prepaid to postpaid with any carrier, you can keep your same number and you can come into a BTC store and your service will not be interrupted at all. Your friends and family won't even know that you made this switch. And for new customers, what, what, what is the process like for them to become postpaid customers? For a new customer, you just walk into the store, have a government-issued IDs, uh, passport, driver's license, stuff like that. Um, and once you do that, it'll be that simple. You could just visit one of our reps and they'll help you. And tell us about some of the postpaid packages. We have packages that suit any lifestyle and any budget. And whether you're homeschool, whether you have working from home, whatever it is, we always we have something there that will suit your budget. So what are you waiting for? Visit any of our BTC locations and sign up and become a postpaid customer. It's fast, it's easy, and it's rewarding. These are still the moments that move us. I'm Corbell Pyfrom. Be well and be back here next BTC Connection. Bahama Christian Council preparing for an island-wide outreach on Friday. Several churches will be coming together to spread the message of Christ throughout the various communities on Grand Bahama. It's how your hall has the story. Some 50 churches are expected to take part in the outreach initiative. President of the Grand Bahama Christian Council, Reverend Dr. Robert Lockhart says, the Lord laid it on his heart a year and a half ago for the Christian community to go into the community and spread the word of God. He says the street meetings will all be held at the same time. There still isn't any substitute for going to someone's house and praying with them. There still isn't any substitute for actually connecting with people physically and sharing with them the message of Jesus Christ. And so I said, you know what, if we can do this all together, there's enough churches on the island of Grand Bahama for us to reach this whole island. We cannot do it by ourselves, but together 
it can be accomplished. And, um, and I realize that all of us are preachers, all of us are teachers, all of us love sharing the gospel with the lost. And, um, and sometimes these walls are barriers to that gospel getting out there to those that don't know Jesus. Now the president of the Grand Bahama Christian Council says since the pandemic, some persons have gotten out of the habit of going to church due to the fact that churches were closed and the street meetings will bring the church to the community. Some people have gotten discouraged. Some people have gotten um, um, uh, depressed. Some persons are feel hopeless and helpless. And we want to let persons know that, hey, um, um, that even though you may not be able to move around as you wanted to, nothing's has changed when it comes to the Word of God. And if you do feel hopeless and helpless, God, amen, he's a God of hope and he's able to help us. And as for what the council expects to gain from the outreach initiative. We care about our people. I care about it as a Bahamian people. I care about our community. So do all of us as pastors. And, um, and I want the community to be aware of that, that God loves you and we love you. And, um, and the key is, is that we're commanded to go and, um, and we want to come out to our fellow Bahamians and let them know that, um, that God loves you and that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. We want to pray for you. We want to share with you. We want to encourage you. We want to lift you up and we want to share the good news of the gospel with you. Pastor Adam Brister and Bishop Sobe Kempsey, they are looking forward to being a part of the street meetings. And we are going to carry the gospel message on the streets to let dying man know that Jesus, yes, he does save. He heals and delivers. And we are excited because we know that God is going to do something. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. And now it is time for our Munchin' with Megan segment. Tonight, veteran chef Dwayne Clare is in the kitchen and he's spicing up what may be considered everyone's favorite fish. Hey guys, welcome to my segment. Today we're cooking with chef Dwayne Clare. Chef, tell us what we're making. Oh wow, it's a perfect time of the year for nice prepared ginger, Pineco breaded, snapper fillet with fresh mango salsa. Yeah, what are we gonna need? We got okra here, whole fresh butter, ginger pineco breadcrumbs, some microgreens, cherry tomatoes, fresh lemon, and here is the key of the component, a nice mango salsa, components of cilantro, our bell peppers, sweet onions, and we're gonna top it off with some house-grown plantain chips. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some oil to, the, to our saute pan. Would you like to assist me with that? Yes. Oh, that's perfect. Great. Can you get me one of those snapper fillets right here? Okay, great. Freshly caught, freshly bought in, all the way from West End. We're gonna just crust the surface of this with okay. the pineco breadcrumbs. You wanna take a spoon? Okay, so you're just gonna crust the top of it. Okay. Now, can I assist you a bit with this? Sure. I'm gonna basically <laughs> press the breadcrumbs on it, okay? That's pressed on. And now we got our saute pan here. So if you will be so kind as just to take this snapper fillet out and you put it breadcrumb side down, lightly and gently. I'm okay. kind of afraid now. Okay, can I can help you. Yes, yeah, you let, can. Me, let, me, let, me, let me let me help you here. If you, if you would like some help, I can assist you. Okay, there we go. So nice. we have it in our saute pan. Okay, we're gonna leave that there and let that start to simmer gently. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have our nice okra. There's some, there should be some pesto oil there. You're gonna gently marinate the okra. Just put a little bit over the okra, slightly. That's great. Good. Now you wanna put a little salt on top of that? So is the pesto, you guys made it here? Oh, oh yeah, that's nice. uh, fresh, freshly, freshly made. And then in the meantime, we're gonna put some regular olive, olive oil, oil in our frying pan and we're gonna get our okra ready. Okay, that's good. We're gonna take our okra, okay? That's ready now to turn over on the, on the opposite side. Okay, so this okra here is almost ready to turn. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to overcook. We right. don't want it to burn. Mm -hmm. You, you want to turn a couple of those? Sure. Oh, that's beautiful. Look, look, at, look at that. It's not slimy. It's not soggy. Correct. It's nicely roasted <laughs> okra. We're going to just add a little knob of fresh old butter mm -hmm. to our pan. Okay? Nice. This basically just gives it a little extra flavor. Now, we're going to plate up our snapper fillet. Okay, so just gonna do some fresh okra. Now we have our nice uh, mango salsa here. Freshly made too? Fresh, freshly made. Nice. Fresh mangoes. We need our fresh grilled uh, lemon. 
Always okay. good with seafood, Always right? good with seafood, a little lemon. Someone managed to bring some backyard uh, cherry tomatoes, which is, which is nicely grilled. So we're gonna just All place right. those here. Okay, a little planting chip, you know, on the top. Nice. Now we're gonna take just a little bit of this oil. Okay. This is the pesto. A little bit of the pesto okay. oil. Okay. All right. And there you have it, ginger panko crusted snapper fillet. And now it's time to munch. And now it's time for your midweek check on sports with Jay Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports. Female sprinter Brianne Bethel, who recently qualified for the Olympic Games, was selected as the winner of the conference's most outstanding performance award. The award is presented to student athletes who recorded their highest ranking marks on the NCAA performance list during the American Outdoor Track and Field Championships this season. Brianne just about did it all for the Cougars in Tampa, competing in the 200 meters, 400 meters, 4x1, and the 4x4, winning two individual titles. Bethel blazed the track with a time of 22.54 seconds to win the 200 meters and shattered the meet record in the event. Switching gears now to baseball, scores from week five of the league baseball. The Buccaneers defeated the Predators 9-4 in coach pitch. In minor league play, the Lions took care of Team Grand Bahama with the final score 6-1. In major league play, it was the Predators that got the W against the Lions 7-2. In junior league action, the Bucs edge out the Hurricanes 8-5. Over in senior league play, Fortune 360 Eagles win against Chrissy Joe's Rebels 15-8 and the Reapers in a close one was able to beat out the Eagles 19-8. And that's a good check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed. Caribbean, the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to travel the United States. Bins starting at $150 and passengers starting at $120. Third Dimension on Yellow Pine Street introduces its new home improvement center. Step into our brand new fully stocked showroom for the latest in doors, tiles, housewares, kitchenwares, bathwares, vanities, power tools, electrical, and plumbing supplies. So stop by our showroom to view our full range of products or call the Home Advisor hotline at 602-0935 today. We are your home advisors. Yes, sir. What you saying, bro? Fine, everything cool. Right here, waking dead hot. What you doing for lunch? Are you catching me here checking out this ZNS shopping network site? I you looking at this out to see deal? Yeah. How do one go? For $30, you get a $50 coupon. 20% off fish at the stand, plus you get $10 in minutes. Come on, you can't beat that. Well, out to see it is. www.ZNSShoppingNetwork.com Select the island of your choice and shop anywhere, anytime. Are you tired? Overweight? Having trouble sticking to your health and fitness goals? Well, look no further. The Fitness Connection has teamed up with ZNS to bring you health bites. This and every Thursday, tune in and we'll make sure you get on track and stay on track with your health and fitness goals. Tune in. ZNS Shopping Network is the place for deals. Bahamas, get ready for our national launch coming June 1st, 2021. For the first time ever, any store can advertise their sale items or discounted coupons 
on ZNS and get TV and radio commercials at never seen before prices. So if you've got stuff and you want to put it on sale, we'll tell the entire Bahamas all about it. So merchants, log on to ZNSShoppingNetwork.com and click the Merchant Inquiry button today to get started. Daddy, please don't go. Written by Reverend Dr. Elvis Burroughs. Book launch on Sunday, June 13th at Freeport Bible Church. Get your tickets today. Phone 351-8311. Your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Are our Facebook friend of the day. We thank you so much for your support. And that's going to do it for us here in the North, but be sure to stay tuned as the Bahamas Tonight continues. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepherd. Have a wonderful evening. in the Bahamas tonight, the National Report. Finance is diverted, but the government contends its direction is clear as it presents its 2021-2022 budget. The opposition condemning the upcoming fiscal plan, charging that it's fallen short. Job seekers doing what it takes to make a living. And tourism touts home porting benefits. Those stories and more when the Bahamas tonight returns. You are a healthcare worker. Thank you for fighting on the front lines against COVID-19. It is normal to feel stressed when taking care of others who don't feel well. But remember to take care of yourself. Don't forget to rest between shifts, eat healthy meals, engage in physical activity, and stay connected to family and friends. Avoid harmful coping strategies like drinking alcohol. For managers of healthcare workers, the same tips apply to you. Here's how you can help. Consistently give updates. Rotate staff between high and low stress level functions. Encourage work breaks and ensure that they know where they can find help. We are here for you. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC's Dollar Holla Deals. Good evening, I'm Akash Lopender. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. Thanks for joining us. The Accelerated Bahamas Recovery Plan, for short, Accelerate Bahamas. Its details comprehensively laid out today as the Minister of Finance, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, presented his government's fiscal plan for the next 12 months. The much-anticipated budget telling the story of the challenges the government continues to contend with as it plots a path to recovery post-COVID. We begin our team coverage tonight with Aldovis Munnings at the House of Assembly. Driving economic growth that is resilient, dynamic and inclusive is how government describes the 2021-2022 budget delivered by Minister of Finance, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, here at the House of Assembly on Wednesday. And it's no secret that 2019's Hurricane Dorian and the current COVID-19 pandemic has striked a severe blow to the national economy. Circumstances beyond our control may have shifted our immediate priorities and related initiatives, but our economic vision for the nation still remains the same. The 2021-2022 budget is being dubbed the Accelerated Bahamas Recovery Plan, or Accelerate Bahamas. The budget's foundation is cemented on seven core pillars. Job creation, small business development, healthcare improvements and vaccinations, tourism development, public and private sector investment, digitization and innovation, and fiscal responsibility. But Minister of Finance, Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis made it clear this budget is designed to continue providing support to families and businesses most in need in the immediate term and to accelerate the recovery of the Bahamian economy. That's why he emphasized that extraordinary times calls for an extraordinary response. Total government revenues are projected at $2.247 billion, 
representing an increase of 588.3 million or 35.5% over the projected fiscal year 2020-2021 total revenue. Despite this improvement, revenues are projected to remain 7.5% below the 2.426 billion posted in fiscal year 2018-2019, reflecting the fact that our economy will not likely return to full capacity during the upcoming fiscal year. Some new initiatives revealed include the government's employment incentive program, allowing businesses to apply for a VAT tax credit to cover the salaries of up to 10 new employees brought onto their payrolls as of July 1st. The allowable tax credit will be up to $400 per week per employee. Every Bahamian small business and entrepreneur with an annual turnover of less than $5 million will also be able to apply for and obtain duty-free concessions on all the items needed to start or expand their business inventory. $250 million in financing will be available to the Small Business Development Center over the next five years, starting with its first injection of $35 million in the upcoming budget. The capital budget will provide $2 million for a permanent headquarters for the Junkanoo community, $5 million for the Young Professional Housing Subdivision in Western New Providence, $16 million to support the private-public partnership initiatives for new airport construction in Exuma, North Eleuthera, and Long Island, as well as other airport renovations. $7.5 million earmarked for the Ministry of Education's digitization projects. $6 million for upgrades to the information technology infrastructure in the healthcare sector. And $3 million to continue support for the Ministry of Agriculture's food security program. And what Bahamians really want to hear, the budget's additional incentives and concessions to ease their lives. Elimination of VAT on baby and adult diapers as well as sanitary pads and tampons for women. Elimination of duty on disinfectants in support of efforts to maintain hygiene and sanitation. Elimination of duty by application for construction and repairs to churches and other buildings used for religious gatherings. Elimination of duty on a range of sporting equipment and apparatus to encourage exercise and fitness. Elimination of duty on a number of IT-related hardware and cabling to support private sector digitization efforts. Reduction in duty on a number of building supplies to 20% and 25% respectively to encourage construction activity. Most notably, Mr. Speaker, this includes the reduction in duty on electrical wire to 20% and continues the reduction duties on construction-related items that we began last year. The Prime Minister concluded his budget communication that the country must realize that the current economic state can't last forever and we all must begin to prepare for the future. Altavis Munnings, ZNS Network News. Well, at nearly $900 million, the country's deficit remains at such an elevated level that achieving the targeted debt-to-GDP ratio has been pushed back. What was detailed then in the 2020 fiscal strategy report as a two-year delay is now projected to happen in fiscal year 2030-2031. While the deficits proposed in the current budget remain at very elevated levels, they are necessary to sustain the economy and set the stage for the impending economic rebound. We all hoped the impact of COVID-19 would have dissipated by now, but that's not ours, nor the world's current reality. What is, is the prediction that there will be a protracted pace of recovery. And on the road to this, the government is determined to pull in more revenue and at the same time further rein in expenditure. In fact, with its new and enhanced revenue measures like the $31 million it foresees pulling in from the vacation home rental market, total government revenue is expected to sit at $2.2 billion this upcoming fiscal year. And as Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis explained during his lengthy budget communication this morning, 
This translates into a $588.3 million, or 35.5% increase. Despite this improvement, revenues are projected to remain 7.5% below the 2.426 billion posted in fiscal year 2018-2019, reflecting the fact that our economy will not likely return to full capacity during the upcoming fiscal year. That's revenue. If we were to look at expenditure, a year plus into it and COVID-19 still weighing heavy on those numbers. $100 million to be exact, money for food and unemployment assistance, health sector support, as well as to undergird the revenue spent on the employment incentive program and similar incentives. Further, while the plan was for a gradual reduction of interventions to state-owned enterprises or SOEs, this too will have to wait. As a result of the measures outlined in this budget, recurrent expenditures estimated at 2.83 billion, an increase of 270.1 million, or a 10.6 percent increase over the projected spend for fiscal year 2020-2021. All this taken into consideration, the fiscal deficit is estimated to come in at $951.8 million, 7.7% of GDP. The major portion of this deficit will be funded through external sources, including an anticipated bond offer and ongoing, and ongoing operations with our multilateral partners. The House will note that we are pursuing an opportunity with one of our key multilateral partners to help support the potential bond offering through a guarantee which should secure interest cost savings for the government. Well, the opposition, meantime, says the budget lacks credibility or solutions. During a press conference today, opposition leader Philip Davis charged that the proposed fiscal plan does not address glaring needs. It's, it is a short-term budget for survival of the FNM, not a visionary piece that is, that is designed to, to bring relief to, our, to people who are suffering or to set a path to growth to ensure that we don't, we don't become a failed state. Shadow Minister of Finance and PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper, meantime, lamented the government's borrowing schedule saying it will be a burden for a long time to come. We are racking up foreign debt that will come due in a few years. We note that the government has been granted a $100 million emergency loan from the World Bank. We call on them to table the particulars of this and all other new loan agreements in the House of Assembly. The raft of policy-based loans to fund the budget will make it difficult for future administrations to implement strategic reforms. Well, still ahead tonight, hear about the benefits of home porting to our number one industry and the health minister optimistic family island lockdowns will slow down COVID-19 spread. Those stories and more when we return. Davis and Charles Fisher at 7 o'clock weekday mornings. We also have news updates at every hour starting at 2 p.m. You can then watch live at 5 with Amajal Knowles, followed by The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition at 6.30, and the National Report live at 7 p.m. All right here on the ZNS Network. This portion of the news was brought to you by Sun Oil Limited Shell, fueling journeys that matter. Hear that? If you listen closely, you can hear the heartbeat of a nation. That unique sound of a great country pounding with colorful history, a rich culture, and unwavering ambition. When you look around, you recognize its pulse. The people who love to celebrate, who identify with triumph. A people who know how to be our brother's keeper. Commonwealth Bank. Built by Bahamians, here for Bahamians. Bahamians helping Bahamians. Aha! Uh -huh. The 20th.
dollar combo Unlimited talk, yo To every network you know Across the Bahamas I got six gigs of data Plus unlimited cha-cha It's a swirl over two Now let me check my people On Facebook and WhatsApp BTC is where it's at I rock my combo Your BTC 10-day combo is now only $20 And is supersized with a new low price BTC you know that feeling you get when you have an uncontrollable desire to fry chicken? That's the KFC. A substance that stimulates your senses to identify the aroma of our secret recipe or an extra crispy crunch from any distance. It's invisible to the naked eye, but you can feel it traveling throughout your body, taking control so you can enjoy a juicy bite of KFC. Ignite your senses with KFC. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. 25 new COVID cases on record, all right here in the capital, putting New Providence's count to 8,553. The countrywide total to 11,622. Just one of the newly infected showing a history of travel within 14 days. A look at hospitalization showing a decrease in the number of people in the intensive care unit. That figure at three with another 44 considered moderately ill. As for tests completed, we're at 308 for Tuesday, two of them repeats and three inconclusive. Minister of Health, the Honorable Renwood Wells, backing up the decision to impose lockdowns in Great Harbor Key and Bullocks Harbor, the Berry Islands, North and Central Andros and Cat Island. In fact, he sees such a move as proactive to preventing a further increase in COVID-19 infections. We said that the government's policy always was that we do not want uh, an expanding and surge of COVID in the family islands because we do not have the requisite uh, infrastructure in the family islands. We do not have all of the infrastructure in the islands, the ventilators, the negative pressure inside the, 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 the government facilities to be able to house, hold on to those persons who would become critical with COVID. We would have to fly them out and fly them into New Providence. So our position has always been, if we see the expanding and surging of COVID in an island that the government will move uh, expeditiously to, to break the chains of transmission uh, because we are better able to fight COVID on New Providence and Grand Bahama than we are at other places in the country. The COVID-19 pandemic forcing more and more Bahamians to apply for lesser paying domestic made jobs and other positions once considered undesirable. Labor Director John Pinder telling us that while those positions were typically filled by foreign laborers, economic circumstances dictate otherwise. If we have some person who say, listen, I'll take anything at this time, okay? And so some person who would have been doing housekeeping work in hotels had to uh, resort to taking some um, housekeeping jobs domestically. Now the difference is the payments pay minimum wage. They offer you 250 at max, maybe to do something. In some cases, they saw as much as 350. But when they work in hotels, they may get only 210. But they depend on the 50 percent gratuity and tips, you know. And so they have to realize that the 250 was better than nothing at all. So some persons had uh, taken some of those um, jobs that were available. Uh, boy, I see a lot of jobs in the, in the more sophisticated areas paying them high salaries to maids. And as the country grapples to rebound in a COVID-19 environment, Pender says Bahamians must be less dependent on government and take more initiative to make things happen for themselves. We need a whole country to be successful so that at the end of the day we could reduce the poverty line. There's all this talk about um, minimum wage versus livable wage. People can stop depending on the government to make life happen for them. While it's important that the government put infrastructure in place and cause there to be opportunities, I think uh, it's time for us to look at being more independent. We need to look at not just political independence, but financial independence. And that is the message I certainly would like to spread to all Bahamians. Tools necessary to make your life worth living. 
CEO and Executive Director of the Tourism Development Corporation, Janet Johnson, sees great opportunity for the Bahamas, in particular the Family Islands, when it comes to home porting. Royal Caribbean Cruises will set sail from Nassau for the first time on June 12th with Crystal Cruises to begin home porting at the Nassau Cruise Port in July. Crystal also recently announced six additional sailing dates in October and November. Working very closely with, with the islands um, and stakeholders on those islands to try and ensure that they are ready and that they are um, working to, 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 to produce, the, 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 put, put the best foot forward um, as the visitors uh, come to, to, to our country. Uh, this is, this is, is new and exciting and, and I think it, it's going to help with diversifying the, uh, the tourism product in those islands. Um, it might even create a population shift where people um, go back to their home islands in, in, uh, in search of gainful employment um, and gainful employment that's available. For its part, Royal Caribbean will sail from the Nassau cruise port and head to Grand Bahama, Coco Key, and Cozumel, Mexico. Crystal Cruises will visit islands like Great Exuma, San Salvador, Long Island, Bimini, and Spanish Wells on its seven-night Bahamian cruises. Johnson says everyone has to start fresh because of the pandemic, but the reset can be used as an advantage. A lot of, of angst that come out of the COVID pa um, pandemic, mm -hmm. um, uh, but there's, there's, there's been, there's been a, um, a lot of um, rejiggering, re-engineering of what we have to, in order to make it more sustainable. Um, so we're going to work uh, very closely with all of our partners um, to ensure that the Bahamas is built back better and um, we're, we're thrilled uh, to be in this space at this time. On that note, the Ministry of Tourism and Aviation and Copa Airlines announcing that flights twice a week from Nassau to Brazil take off June 17th. Travelers staying 14 days or more can return through the United States, provided they comply with the country's COVID-19 travel protocols and visa requirements. Tourism and Aviation Minister the Honorable Denisio Diagler noting that Bahamians look forward to welcoming visitors from Brazil which has countless opportunities for a safe, carefree, and enjoyable vacation experience. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Ministry of Tourism Director General Ms. Joy Jibberlu recently shared key updates on the state of tourism in the country. In navigating this pandemic and preparing for tourism rebound, our guiding priority has been our commitment to ensuring the health, safety, and well-being of those who visit and live in the Bahamas. Our country currently has in place a streamlined suite of updated protocols that make travel and vacationing in the Bahamas seamless and safe. Through strict enforcement of health and safety protocols under the Bahamas' clean and pristine program, as well as the World Travel Tourism Council's Safe Travels program, we have managed to curb the spread of COVID and keep the number of cases relatively low. The last few months have seen the first phase of the rollout of our local vaccination campaign. We have eased our entry protocols for travelers who've been fully vaccinated, eliminating the need for a PCR COVID test requirement upon entry or follow-up testing during their stay. With cruises accounting for over 70% of our destination's visitor arrivals, it is with great excitement that we welcome the news of the return of cruises to our islands. Crystal Cruises and Royal Caribbean announced their return to the Bahamas this summer. There is some very encouraging news coming out of the Out Islands. Room nights sold and room revenue 
are now expected to reach the 60% mark compared to 2019. The weddings and honeymoons market remain one of our priority vertical markets. In Abaco, approximately 80% of the island's pre-Dorian hotel inventory is now open for business. We will continue to make excellence and visitor satisfaction our goal as we work through the challenges of recovering our tourism business. It was only temporarily lost to the pandemic. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Rosé Demerit and this is Tourism Today. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Basketball is back, baby, and so is NBA League Pass, only with Rev Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free, along with incredible prizes, including a brand new 50 inch smart TV, NBA gear, and more. With tons of prizes and gear, signing up for Trio is the best on and off court move this year. Just call 601 8992 or visit www.rev.bs slash promotions slash Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free. And now for an exclusive view you'll only see here on the ZNS network, you're getting the first look at the two Ackland women suspected of committing a grand heist. The alleged robbers arriving in the capital this afternoon after lengthy investigations by detectives dispatched down south. Officials reports say it was Thursday, May 20th, when police were alerted to a commercial triplex on fire. Examinations at the scene revealing a completely torched National Insurance Board office, two destroyed businesses, and airily enough, a safe missing large sums of cash. Well, shortly thereafter, police nabbed the suspected robbers, leading to their transport to the Capitol today. The two women have been booked into the Nassau Street Police Station and are expected to appear in court later this week. From the Daily Crime Report, two men in hospital after being shot last night. Police say the victims were among a group of men standing on Sunshine Way around 10 last night when two males wielding firearms emerged from the public park shooting in their direction. While the suspects got away, the two injured men were rushed to hospital. Investigations are ongoing. Police pr probing the apparent suicide of a man found hanging from the ceiling of his Johnson Terrace home shortly after 9 o'clock this last night. Emergency personnel pronounced the man dead upon arrival at the scene. Baptists throughout the country congregating this week for their 86th annual convention held under the theme Pass the Salt, addressing opening night at Mount Horror Baptist Cathedral in Sandy Port. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis thanked officials and members of the Baptist Missionary and Educational Convention for the part they've played in helping the country get through the pandemic. Referencing the current lockdowns in North and Central Andros, the Berry Islands and Cat Island, he called on Baptists to pray for these communities. God calls upon all in leadership to look after and to protect his people. With each decision we made, with each measure we brought forward, our goal was to help keep you and your families safe. Politics and popularity were never considerations. Along with the best medical minds in our country, we devised a set of public health measures 
to protect Bahamians. This included mask wearing and limiting gathering of people. Prime Minister again stressed that the COVID-19 vaccine will surely end the pandemic's emergency phase. The vaccine is a pathway to, for us to invigorate our economy. This will create more jobs and expand working hours. For tourism, visitors would want to travel to places where the virus is under control. And we are seeing that demand to come to the Bahamas is overwhelming. If we are disciplined and take the vaccine, our country will be even more attractive to tourists and visitors. And I want to thank the country's pastors and the religious community for supporting the public health guidelines. And I thank those who are encouraging their communities to get vaccinated. Information technology, better known as IT, continues to be leading globally here at home. It's a sector many see as a key to upgrading their skills to meet the ever-increasing demand in the job market. Carla Palmer tells us more. Thousands of residents have already graduated from the various information technology programs at the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, BTVI, with hundreds more enrolling each year. IT office assistant at BTVI, Shantavia Martin, says digital literacy is among programs most sought after. We are trying our best to bridge the skills gap in the Bahamas, and we are starting from the young students straight into adulthood. We have programs for, for everybody. Our IT program is much better than anybody else's in the Caribbean because we offer so many international certifications. Our students, when they, come, when they finish and they complete their programs, they can work anywhere in the world. And also, as they complete the program through the school, we, are, we enter them into the talent bridge, the international talent bridge from one of our companies that we partner with. It's called Cisco. Cisco is an IT hub. It's, it's like the top tier in IT all around the world. Enrollment in IT courses at BTVI is reportedly always at 100% capacity. The ICT program actually starts with students in the ninth grade. So they spend their high school, their senior high school years developing um, college credit so that when they graduate from the 12th grade, they also can graduate from the ICT program and venture off into another college program. So like we encourage them to come here at BTVI and get an associate's degree in one year. And they can also work at the same time because they already have so many industry credits. So they would be higher than the entry level position because they've already developed that. And the program only runs in the summer. The ICT program is always in high demand, with limited space and reportedly twice as many applicants seeking a seat. Oversubscription is an understatement. According to Martin, 100 available seats versus an excess of 370 applicants on average each time. Every year we take on an additional 150 students. Currently we have 370 applicants. 378 applicants trying to get into the program. So with that being said, we are now having to streamline and filter through and really make the students compete. So you compete, you show that you want to do it, you score higher, so the higher scores, they move into the program. Started in 2018, the ICT program is funded by the Office of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Finance to an annual budget of some $700,000. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. It's grad season, and at the University of the Bahamas, that's hundreds of students trading in classrooms and lecturers for jobs and employers. In this report, Crystal Darling chats with a soon-to-be graduate who tells us how the pandemic altered the face of one of UB's most interactive programs. Approximately 600 students will be graduating from the University of the Bahamas this year. Former ZNS intern and senator of the School of Education at UB, Denivia Seymour, explains that for most of them, including aspiring teachers in the program, the road was long and hard. Especially in education, our classes are more hands-on due to the fact, for example, we have to go into the school system, spend hours each semester in the school system as pre-service teachers. And so with the pandemic going on now, we are unable to go into the system as we would have planned. However, we still had to transition to the virtual route. 
Last year, the global pandemic forced many into virtual classes. The abrupt transition for senior education students was especially challenging, with them also having to conduct virtual sessions for their mandatory teaching practice. But that didn't deter them. Seymour says that they had to get creative. Um, you know, you were able to use PowerPoints. You could have made interactive PowerPoints. We had to create our own content videos. That is how talented we had to, you know, that, that's the creativity we had to express, you know. So even our primary um, education majors, you know, they have to teach students whose attention span is only so long, so they had to be extra creative. And it was well worth the effort. Seymour explains that they have come out of those trying times more equipped and that the experience opens up the doors for a new norm in the classroom. And that is what education is coming to, understanding who we are teaching. We teach content so much that we forget to teach students. And so when we start to look at the strengths of our students and see which norm they work best in, whether it be face-to-face, -face, hybrid, or virtual, then we can actually gear ourselves to looking at the various models. And Seymour has this message for those receiving degrees this year. To each student who's graduating that I am proud of them. I'm sure they are proud of what they would have accomplished because it's not easy. Yes, I totally understand that, you know, face to face is what we all would want. But due to the fact that the COVID cases are increasing, um, there's nothing much we really can do, but all I can say to them is, is that the country is looking at them, what they would have accomplished, how hard they would have worked, and we salute them. The new Providence University of the Bahamas 2021 commencement ceremony is scheduled for this Thursday at 4 p.m. It will be presented on Facebook. Crystal Darling, ZNS Digital Media. Zenness Radio celebrating its birthday today. It was back in 1936 when the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas originated as a state-owned radio service some 15 years after radio broadcasting began in North America and Britain. The main objective, to provide hurricane warnings to the southern islands of the Bahamas. The government launched ZNAS, an acronym for Zephyr Nassau Sunshine, as part of the Telegraph Department, just in time for the coronation of Britain's King George V on May 12, 1937. By the end of May, ZNAS was broadcasting two hours a day using a 500-watt transmitter. Programming consisted of BBC News, local news pulled from Nassau newspapers and musical recordings from the BBC. ZNS remains the only radio station today with broadcast coverage of the entire country. The network consists of Radio Bahamas ZNS 1, ZNS Inspiration 107.9 FM, and ZNS 3 and 104.5 FM in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Well, as part of ZNS Radio's anniversary, Desmond Saunders highlights the work of current radio personalities and the continued social impact of the national voice on the country. That uh, BIS now is operating out of the other side of ZNS. A walk down memory lane for radio personality and coordinating producer at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas, Melissa Knowles, recounting fond memories of her time spent at ZNS. A 17-year broadcast veteran, Knowles is one of the leading figures who witnessed the evolutionary period of radio broadcasting in the country. I've had the experience of Gordon Lowe. I've had the pleasure of sitting in a studio with, with Alex Curry, of, of being around a, a Craig Roll. I, I know that it is to sit in 1240 and have to push the card in and press play for the station ID or for the legal ID to play on the station and then pull that card out and pull another card in and then pull a CD from this place and pop it in. And so, in essence, what I was doing was running the station, programming the music on the fly. And now we have an entire RCS system that does that for us. Knowles got her big break while working as an investigative reporter at a local daily and a student at the College of the Bahamas. The rest was history for this young, eager Grand Bahama native. The Broadcasting Corporation is looking for announcers. And so I looked at her, uh, I think her name was Frisco or Petula or something, and I, I looked at her and I said, girl, this is our chance. 
I said, are you going to apply? She said, how you mean? So we both applied, and they were asking for us to come in and do an air check. At 11, Militia always dreamed of working in radio. Bill Bain and Gordon Lowe were some of the radio legends she emulated. I would listen to community announcements in the car. And I would mock people like, like Bill Vane. So in the backseat of the car, while I'm on my way to St. Paul's, I'm having my own community announcements. I, I had mail boats, everything. And so I used to think that one day I can get there. And got there she did. After landing this opportunity, Melissa's voice and imprint would be felt and heard throughout the Bahamian archipelago. There were several persons out on vacation. Someone called in sick, and I think somebody was out because they had a sore throat, and I think it was Sister Sharice. So there was, there was no one else to read community, and Gordon Lowe pops his head in, and he was like, it's, it knows it's almost done. What are we going to do? And I said, well, um, I, can, I can read community. He said, can you read community? I said, yes, I can. He said, have you read community before? <laughs> No, you know, but I, I, I could do it. And he looked everywhere, he looked all around, and then he was like, oh, go ahead, go. As Radio Bahamas celebrates 85 years as a national broadcaster, Knowles believes a corporation has made tremendous strides, but there are more feats to overcome. I think perhaps the reestablishing of 104.5, I think beefing up 107.9 in terms of the music um, for, for both stations and identifying a sound, and I think we will be good. The journey continues. As we head to the break, we'd like to thank all our viewers watching us live on our social media platforms. And just in case you missed the news, be sure to head there to catch up. Stay with us. There's more after the break. Join up for life insurance. Secure the ones that you love. Join up with Family Guardian. We offer full protection. Join the family. Disinfectant spray is certified by a U.S. EPA compliant lab to kill the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Beep Disinfectant Spray is now available in a convenient travel size can that travels everywhere with you. Beep for a happy, healthy home. Shell Unleaded improves your fuel economy, giving increased miles per gallon, allowing you to do more of what you really want. Special additives used in Shell Unleaded improve your engine's efficiency. So go further with Shell Unleaded. Venture out to beaches, junkanoo, and festivals, and bring home memories that will last a lifetime. Shell, fueling journeys that matter. When you wanna spend money on your tile supplies, who you gonna call? The Tile King. When you tile your house and you wanna look good, who you gonna call? The Tile King. Visit the new Tile King showroom, which is internationally recognized as the finest tile showroom in the Caribbean, located in the Builders Mall on Wolf Road. The Tile King. Who you gonna call? Tiles on everything. As post-hurricane reconstruction efforts in Abaco and Grand Bahama continues, progress has been limited by labor and supply shortages as the pandemic disrupted typical supply chain operations. To boost those efforts, the government will extend the Special Recovery Economic Zone order to the end of December. The order provides tax relief for full 
feet of construction related supplies and activities and it will go a long way in supporting the full restoration of the impacted communities. I am also pleased to advise that for the communities of Abaco and Grand Bahama, we are for a period of two years eliminating the VAT on conveyance for properties under 250,000 for Bahamians to encourage persons to invest in buying properties and homes in these islands. Foreign buyers under the same threshold will get a discounted VAT rate. Go plan paving the way for residents in the Southern Islands to get their own special economic zones order to spur economic activity and encourage home and business investment. Through the amended Family Island Development Encouragement Act, residents, investors and business owners in the South will qualify for both duty and VAT concessions. Included in this are concessions and discounts of VAT on conveyances with zero VAT payable by Bahamians on transactions under $500,000 and with discounted VAT for non-Bahamians under the same threshold. These concessions, Mr. Speaker, will last for two years and are intended to be a catalyst for exhilarated economic activity in the Southern Islands by prospective investors, as well as Bahamians who may be looking to build or buy a home in those islands, which is the very ambition of Auxiliary Bahamas. Health Minister, the Honorable Renwood Wells, acknowledging to reporters that while COVID-19 has exposed many kinks in the healthcare sector, the government plans to iron these out. The minister was referring to a lack of life-saving equipment in the family islands during this pandemic. We've secured larger ISO chambers, as a matter of fact, on Monday, yesterday, Monday, yes, um, Monday or Sunday. Monday, Monday, <laughs> my, Tuesday. Yeah, my days are running. <laughs> I spent an awful lot of time over, over the past the three days yeah. in this building. Uh, but uh, we had a, an individual in central Andros who was severely obese with COVID. And we were able to use the larger pods and the help of the Defense Force individuals to get that individual on the air ambulance uh, and to be able to bring them into New Providence. So we've, we've addressed it, uh, but it needs, it, it's a continuing uh, process because we need to purchase additional pods. We need to get larger aircrafts. So in the event that we're ever back in this place, that we would be even more prepared to continue to, to, to uh, save the lives of the Bahamian people and preserve the lives of our people. Officer in charge of Abaco, Chief Superintendent Kenwood Taylor telling us speed a key factor in the majority of fatal accidents on that island, but the numbers are inching closer to the double digits. Yeah, we would have had a total of eight traffic fatalities so far on the island of Abaco. Um, we, during our investigations, it was determined that um, speed was the main factor for these fatalities. Uh, the majority of these fatalities would have taken place on Essie Boodle Highway, Essie Boodle Highway, um, which is a long stretch of road. Um, it takes you from Ash Arbor um, straight in to the north, um, which will take you as far as Crown Haven. Um, we've, we've been out in an effort to sensitize the motoring public um, and to inform them that that particular Highway is just a 45 mile an hour um, highway, and they should drive within the required speed. He also revealed the age range of traffic fatality victims while offering a few safety tips. Just to encourage them not to use their cell phones or other electronic devices while driving. Also, to ensure that they are properly affixed with seat belts. Their passengers, all of them are wearing their seat belts, and to not drink and drive while operating a vehicle, and not to have any opened alcohol beverages or containers in their vehicle while they are traversing those thoroughfares. Um, they would have um, ranged from 21 years old, 21 years old, um, straight up to 54. 
Well, it's time now for a check on Family Island weather with Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good evening, Basil. Uh, good evening, Commissioner. This evening we have a temperature of 79 degrees under partly sunny skies, relative humidity 64%, east northeast winds at 13 miles per hour, the barometric pressure 1,022.1 millibars, that's 30.15 inches, and the pressure is steady. Temperatures around the outlets this evening, they are brought to you by Family Guardian Insurance Company. We're protecting you. 81 degrees in Freeport, 81 in Green Toll Key, Marsha Babico at 79 degrees in Barry Island. 80, 80 in Alistair, Bemini, 79 in Harbor Island, Rock Sound, Elutra, 80 degrees, 80 in Staniel Key, Kemp's Base on Andros, and Fresh Creek in Central Andros, all at 80 degrees. Alistair, Kent Island, 81, San Salvador, 81, also Room Key at 81 degrees, Georgetown, Exuma, 80 degrees, Black Point, Exuma at 80 as well. Taking you further south, more 80s in Ragged Island, Clownstown, Long Island, Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, and Acklands, Matthew Town, Niagara, that's the warm spot to see evening at 83 degrees and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 81 degrees. And your boating forecast tonight is brought to you by Builders Mall, home of FYP, the Tile King, and the Pink Center in the Northwestern Islands. Easterly flow 12 to 18 knots, wave fight 3 to 6 feet, high tide, but well, that takes place at 814 uh, tonight. In the Central and Southeastern Islands, easterly winds at 15 to 20 knots. Caution flags remain in place for the Central and Southeastern Islands as those wave heights will be around 4 to 7 feet. And then tomorrow, which is Thursday, in the northwestern islands, the winds are going to fall off quite nicely, flat, light and variable with flat seas, one to three feet. High tide takes place at 9.05 in the morning with a low tide at 3.12, 3.11, pardon me, in the afternoon. In the central islands, easterly flow, 10 to 15 knots, also a decrease in winds there. Wave heights down two to four feet, no caution flags up. Southeast Bombers, easterly winds, 15 knots, and the wave heights three to five feet with just a moderate chop. And as we take you into Friday, the winds remain light and variable in the northwest Bahamas with flat seas, high tide at 9.59 in the morning, low tide at 4.04 in the afternoon. For the central islands on uh, Friday, the winds southeast at 10 to 15, wave fights 2 to 4 feet. And as we look into the southeast Bahamas on Friday, the winds remain easterly at 15 knots and the wave fights 3 to 5 feet. That's going to do it for your boating forecast. It's time now for your international temperatures. And they are brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. <music> International temperatures brought to you by Royal Star Shards, but stay tuned. Your extended weather forecast is still ahead. Everyone's excited about the $8 meal of the day. Every day, it's a different six-inch sub, plus chips and a 20-ounce drink for just $8. That feels like fresh value. Come in any day of the week for one of your favorite six-inch subs. Like turkey breast, meatball marinara, sweet onion chicken teriyaki, black forest ham, Italian BMT, oven roasted chicken, and tuna. Then add chips and a 20-ounce drink, and you've got the $8 meal of the day. A great meal at a great price every day of the week, only at Subway. You watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Lend, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, let us financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how, together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. Facebook and 
Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns hoping to secure a 2-0 lead on the LA Lakers last night in their Western Conference first round series, but the defending NBA champions aren't going down without a fight. The Lakers won game two, 109 to 102 to tie the series at one and take home court. In the loss, Ayton had 22 points, 10 rebounds. Game three is all set for the Staples Center tomorrow and DeAndre is ready. Just a tough game today, um, you know, us tr trying to, like, you know, match the physicality and, you know, um, I haven't seen as much out there on the floor. Shout out to campaign for doing what he did to, you know, to hold it down for us. But, you know, we, we kept trying and we kept pushing and the crowd helped us get back into it later in the stretch and, you know, you know the better on team got today. No undefeated teams left in the WNBA as Jonquil Jones and the Connecticut Suns suffered their first loss of the season last night against the Seattle Storm. This one went into overtime before the Sun fell 90 to 87. Jonquil, a double double machine, 28 points and 13 rebounds. The Sun are now 5 to 1. They return home on Friday for a matchup with the Washington Mystics. ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Disinfectant spray is certified by a U.S. EPA compliant lab to kill the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Beep Disinfectant Spray is now available in a convenient travel size can that travels everywhere with you. Beep for a happy, healthy home. Every day is a great day of savings at Super Value and Quality Supermarkets. Rainbow Evaporated Milk, Large Can, 89 cents. IGA Peanut Butter, 18 ounce jar, 269. Super Value Alkaline Water, 5 gallon size, 519. Whole Rotisserie Chickens, 7.99 each. Center Cut Pork Chops, 2.59 per pound. Super Value Winton open Sunday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Super Value Cable Beach open Sunday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Available at Jimmy's Liquor Stores or your favorite restaurants and liquor stores throughout the Bahamas. The natural resources of the Bahamas play a critical role in supporting Bahamian livelihoods. For example, the fishing and tourism industry, which include fishermen, seafood exporters, hoteliers, dive operators, restaurants, and others. Collectively, they generate approximately $1.5 billion a year. Therefore, we must respect and preserve what we have. These resources belong to us. This is my livelihood. 
This is my livelihood. This is my livelihood. So let's all do our part to maintain our local economy and a good quality of life. Remember, if we take care of nature, nature will take care of us. Time now for weather. In our final look at whether the dry conditions that we've been experiencing for the past several days will continue right through the weekend, it seems as though it would not be until perhaps uh, Monday afternoon, Monday night, uh, before we get some showers in the area. We're looking at a tropical wave that's heading this way, and if it holds up, well, that could possibly increase the uh, chances of uh, showers come late Monday, heading into Monday night. Our forecast for tonight, partly cloudy, low temperature around 73 degrees, and tomorrow it's going to be another day with lots of sunshine. Very very pleasant, by the way, because those temperatures, they're going to be in the mid-80s and uh, extended weather forecast, keeping them in the mid-80s right through the 70s cycle. Nighttime temperatures unchanged over the past several days. They, too, are holding in the mid-70s with lots of sunshine. Through the weekend, things start to cloud up a bit on uh, Monday as that uh, system gets a little closer. So we'll see an elevation in the chance of showers on Monday, and that could carry over into Monday, sorry, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Akishna. Well, thanks, Basil. That does it for the Bahamas tonight. We thank you for continuing to make ZNS your number one news and information network. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team here, thanks for watching and good night. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. The following is